What's up everybody, how's it going? It's Berk aka Dan's Great here and welcome to this special video where I share with you guys my winning match against the Blitzball All-Stars. Now if you have no idea what I'm talking about at the moment then you've missed out on quite a lot of content on the channel. This was an idea I came up with last year where I tried to set myself up the most difficult and interesting Blitzball match that I could and I have spent quite a lot of time trying to get that done. So I did two live stream sessions for a total of about seven hours in which I tried to do this in front of a live audience and unfortunately I couldn't make it happen. I got close a couple of times and one time I was ahead and I could have swam behind the goalkeeper to register the win but I decided to kind of do the honourable thing and try to win legitimately and it didn't quite work out and I still couldn't win. So <laughs> I wanted to get a legitimate win against these guys and share it with everybody. So I did spend a few more hours after those live stream sessions trying and I did finally manage to get the win. So I wanted to make this video to show you guys that match and how I ended up doing it so that you guys have been invested in the challenge or maybe you're just popping in for the first time, you'll be able to see how the game played out and how I did it. So to avoid kind of stretching this out and repeating myself too many times for people that's already seen all of the live streams and sort of the original introductory video I made for it, I'll link those in the description so you can kind of see the setup for it and the explanation of what this challenge is and why I'm facing this particular team, why do they have the abilities that they have and, and all of that kind of stuff. So I'll focus more on the match itself to keep things a little bit shorter and make it less repetitive for people that are following along with the challenge already. So let's get into it and I'll show you guys the win. During this commentary explanation of the match, I will be pausing at times to explain certain things that you might not have seen or to clarify certain decisions that I made during the match. So the first thing that you're going to see is that I did have Datto in midfield, so I changed my strategy up a little bit and I moved Jasu and Botta back to their normal defensive positions because of course I wanted them to protect me more against uh, Blapper and Velucha, who I would be facing in attack. But Datto in the middle, I felt like there might be more situations where the midfield player might somehow end up with the ball and need to protect it and carry the ball through midfield a little bit. And Datto is the only guy on the team who can reliably carry the ball past players. And so I decided to try Datto in the middle for this particular match. Now, the main thing that you're going to see that's going to look different from all of the live streams that I did was that for the first time, I started to experiment a little bit with mark mode. Now, because we've done reset data, I don't have access to all of like the different tactics and strategies that you can use um, and formations for the team. But one of the base ones that we do have is mark mode. And in mark mode, you can set a player to be marking someone from the opposition team. And as a result, when you activate mark mode, the players will swim towards whoever it is they've been assigned to mark. Now, historically, I always use this for learning techs. So if that player has a particular tech that they have that you want, if you set your marking onto them, then it will prioritize that player to learn that tech. And that's how I generally used it. But it does have a tactical advantage as well, because what you can do as a result of this, for example, is to have two of your players always shadowing one of the attackers and have two of your players always shadowing the other. So there's a greater chance that they won't be able to kind of free up space for themselves and get a no break shot on goal. So this is what I experimented with. And you'll see a little bit more of this as the actual match plays out. So let's blitz things off here. And interestingly, I landed a win in which brother won the first blitz off. Normally this is already like, it makes your already small chances even worse here, but somehow I managed to, to still win on this attempt. So the first thing I'll do is I'll stop it here. Normally my strategy would have been to try and put a defender where Datto is. So once I had maybe 15, 20, 25 attempts at this particular thing, I started to realize that Letty in the middle was really a bad idea because Letty can't really tackle as well and he has low endurance. And those are the two things that for this particular challenge were more important to me. So I moved Letty out of the way and my initial plan was to put a defender here so that when brother inevitably swims into them, the defender would have enough tackling to be able to take the ball off brother and you can kind of stop him in his tracks. Now, unfortunately, that didn't quite work as intended because I didn't want to put Botta there because Botta's endurance is very, very low and he's extremely vulnerable. Like even if he strips the ball, he's probably not going to be able to hold the ball. And so having someone with three endurance in the middle is just too dangerous. Now, Jesu was a better candidate because he has the same endurance stat as Letty and his passing is not too bad. But unfortunately, there's like this really annoying little bug that causes there to not be a two person breakthrough when brother swims into them. So to explain that, Jasu has 63 speed instead of the 60 that's quite standard among Blitzball players. 
And so even though Jasu gets there a little bit quicker than, say, Datto and Waka at these levels, for some reason the game registers this a little bit weirdly and rather always ends up with a no-break situation, which obviously defeats the purpose because the whole point is for Jasu to end up in a break and then tackle Brother and take the ball away from him. So frustratingly, one of my best tactics for kind of nullifying Brother in the middle was taken away because of this strange little bug where the game would always show a no-break in this particular situation. The only way for me to fix that was to put a player that has 60 speed in there instead. And so you can see with Datto and Waka, both of them register correctly and you can actually tackle him. But of course, these two are very weak with their attacking. But because Datto has that high endurance stat, I still wanted to choose him in the middle instead of Letty because I thought he'd be the better option. So let's continue on from here because this is already a dangerous situation where Brother is 100% guaranteed to be able to break through these two and so Brother does his usual thing and swims straight through the middle. And because he's so quick, no one can catch him. And he's already got a no-break facing goal. Now, what do you think Brother should do in this situation? You don't need to be a Blitzball expert to answer that question. He's free in front of goal. He has 14 shooting. Keeper has five catching. What do you do? You shoot and you score the goal. Now, this is something I obviously don't have an understanding of. But the game must have its own decision mechanics for deciding what a Blitzball player does when it's controlled by the computer. And for some strange reason in the programming, in this scenario, there is a chance that Brother doesn't shoot a goal. And so you need like a good bit of RNG to go your way here because my assumption is that there must be some kind of RNG. So it rolls something and maybe there's a high probability of a shot, but if you roll something specific in the, in the RNG, you end up getting something different. So this is my first major stroke of luck here as Brother decides to not shoot a goal and passes instead. He decides to pass to Vilucha, and one of the reasons this challenge is so difficult is that there's three players on the opposing team that can basically score from the halfway line. And they're all so dangerous that even though Brother does something really stupid here, there's still a chance that Vilucha can score if she does the right thing. So despite this silly decision, it did not mean that the danger was over by any stretch. So let's see what happens when Vilucha gets the ball here. She can definitely still score. She could just stop right now and shoot, but she doesn't. She takes too long and she ends up getting a massive breakthrough here. Now, what's funny is that she can still score in this situation because she rides the challenge, then she uses her 14 shoot, and unfortunately the second player misses, and so I was already thinking, oh god, like this could go really, really wrong. So what you're gonna see here, I'm gonna pause it right here. There's four shot left and Keeper has five catching. Now, for anyone watching the streams, you would have seen the sheer amount of times that Keeper pulls like a two or a three in the catching RNG instead of the five, which should be the average for him. So we've seen a bunch of times where shots coming in at three or four have still gone in. So I was already very nervous at this point, but Keeper pulls off a clutch save and saves that four and tosses it right back in. So again, I'm gonna stop it here because this is kind of important. Jasu has grabbed the ball, but he's already in a very bad position. You can literally see Vilucha lurking here. Jesu has 7 endurance and Velucha has 9 tackling. So if she immediately just decides to swim after Jesu, he's already stuck and he's going to have to somehow try to deal with her and try to be able to get the ball out of danger. So another reason why this match is so difficult is because once your players do have the ball, in most positions, most of the players will not be strong enough to not give away the ball. Either they're going to get tackled or they're going to get blocked. So this was already very dangerous and my only concern was to see if I could somehow wriggle into a little bit of space with Jasu to be able to get rid of the ball and get it away from my goal. So the aim was to try and swim away from Vilucha and kind of hope that she didn't follow me closely enough for me to gain a tiny bit of space before her and probably brother from the middle came to try and tackle Jasu. So let's see how this little bit played out because it's, it's kind of important. So I immediately tried to get away and I have to switch to my normal kind of um, movement here. And I buy myself a tiny, tiny bit of space here. This was really fortunate because Vilucha decided to swim away and Brother was the only one who followed me. And I just about managed to stop things in time before Brother reached me. So that was a, that was a nice little move there from Jesu to get out of trouble. 
From here I took some time to think because usually I want to build the attack up using Datto as like my kind of battering ram to try and get through the defenders. But he was in a bit of a tight spot. If I passed a Datto now, there was a chance that Brother, Vilucha and Blapper could all swarm him. So I decided like eventually after thinking for a little bit to just pass it to the only player who has any kind of space, which was Waka, and then hope that someone came close enough to him that Waka could kind of offload the ball to Datto and then begin a new attack. I was also worried that 7 pass wouldn't make it, but I just didn't want to throw it to anybody in the middle here. So in the end I still decided to pass it to Waka and it just about made it. So as soon as Waka got the ball I wanted to make sure that I didn't get tackled by anybody. So I stopped pretty quickly and here I was already looking to see if I could pass the ball to Datto who could be a battering ram. Now he's in a dangerous position but this is a kind of case of baiting out people to get them out of the way. And so immediately I swam towards Blapper on purpose to get him to tackle me because it's pretty much impossible for him to get the ball from Datto and that kind of gets him out of the way in this situation. So now Mark Mode is being used for the first time. Just watch the Poseidorox players from like the little mini-map slash radar thing on the bottom right and you'll see how they kind of distribute and how they defend themselves. Because as of this point I'd officially switched to attack, I changed things back to mark mode because I wanted my defenders to be ready for if and when I lost the ball. Because at this stage all I need is Datto and Waka, the rest of the team isn't that relevant. So basically this was me telling the rest of the team to just go and defend and be ready for like the next attack from the All-Stars while Datto and Waka try to get the job done attackingly. So watch the radar as everybody kind of decides to follow the player that they should be marking. And Waka should hopefully turn around here and start going towards the goal. Because Waka's got nobody to mark. I mean, I don't want him to be bogged down with defending. He only has one job, and that's to score a goal. So he's pushing forward, and I get Blapper out of the way, and I'm trying to kind of create some space for Waka to pass to him so that he can have a one-on-one -on -one against Nimrod. So Datto's doing his usual thing here, but unfortunately, Rop's brawler kicks in, and he's, uh, he's going to try to take the ball off Datto, and immediately does. So that was unfortunate, it was kind of looking like it might be a bit of a bad attempt here. Then something kind of weird happened again. Rob decides to stop in this particular position and he wants to pass, which is not really abnormal because he only has one shooting. So he wants to offload it to someone who can shoot or someone that can get the ball further up the field. Now, looking at the radar, who would you pass the ball to? Rop, for some reason, decides to pass all the way over to Vilucha. Now, the game is usually pretty kind with this stuff, but for this particular pass from Rop to Vilucha, it was just too much, and Vilucha ends up fumbling the ball, and Jasu picks it up as a result. Now, once again, I was faced with a bit of a critical situation here, because as a result of marking Vilucha, Jasu and Vilucha are already very close to each other physically. So how am I going to create any kind of space here in which Jasu can pass the ball to somebody else? So this was a kind of problem here, and that's why it's a bit of a double-edged sword. And I was already worried about Vilucha stripping the ball from Jasu and just sort of swimming towards the goal and shooting from halfway or anywhere inside there and scoring a goal. So this meant, again, that I had to take a risk here and I had to rely on some good luck to be able to break through. So the plan was, you can see from the mini radar, that Waka has a nice bit of space here. And you'll see that the only player that ends up close to him is Brother, and that shouldn't be a threat. So the idea became to basically take the risk, have Vilucha tackle Jasu, hope that Jasu survives it, and then pass the ball through to Waka, who should be able to get a one-on-one -on -one against Nimrod. So that was the plan, but obviously it had to rely on Vilucha missing her tackle and not being able to strip the ball from Jasu. So let's see how it worked out. So the crucial moment happens and Vilucha makes her tackle and she does only six. So Jasu survives the tackle and it ends up being literally a long pass from Jasu. It goes through, it's literally one of those moments and Waka gets his chance in front of goal. Now Brother's going to chase him down, but this is not a problem because he doesn't have the tackling to take the ball from Waka here. So Waka's going to get his clear shot at Nimruk and we're going to see if the RNG is enough for Waka to score the goal and for the Besaidorox to take the lead. So it comes in and yes, Nimruk can't save it. There's only one shot left, so it's very close. But by the skin of our teeth, despite losing the blitz off and having some really weird situations, the Besaidorox take the lead. So now I'm going to stop it because what we saw happening a lot in the live streams was that whenever I took the lead, the game knows when to step on the gas and how to score goals when it wants to do it. There was literally three or four occasions, I think, or maybe more in the previous session that I did, the three, three and a half hour stream, where every time I was in front, 
that was the time when Brother always made the right decision and literally just swam straight through and scored a goal because that's literally how powerful Brother is in this game. If I was playing, I would basically be able to score every single time I won the Blitz off because it's almost guaranteed with Brother's speed. So I was already very nervous here to see what would happen and if it was going to be another case of Brother just getting the ball, swimming straight to the goal and just scoring instantly after I score a goal. So let's see what he does. Weirdly enough, he veers off to the left. Now, normally he doesn't do this as much, and I decided to stay on normal for now because I wanted as much sort of attention on Brother as possible before he decided to kind of commit to doing anything. So he rides that challenge, and of course he's just dribbling along, and he could literally just swim around all of us here and potentially score a goal, but he stops early and he decides to make a pass. Now, this is quite a long pass, so I thought I might be able to block it, but unfortunately the game was cruel here, and Botta completely missed the block. So this ball ended up going through to Viluccia. So I was already a little bit worried again that I was going to let in a goal. So let's take a look at this particular section. So you can see that there's players homing in on Viluccia. And you can see like there's some weird movement going on here. Like Waka's completely ignored Viluccia, of course. And then there was one person who was swimming sort of towards Viluccia, swam past her and then turned around. So I think it's worth a quick explanation of what I tried to do here so that you can see it for like the rest of the game. Now, what I realized after using mark mode a few times was that obviously what happens is that the players will chase down the player that they're supposed to. And by and large, that works pretty well. But it is literally a very, very strict marking system where you can see from the radar here that Waka's completely not interested in turning around and trying to tackle Viluccia. He's just completely ignoring her. And so it creates this sort of situation where what you can do is you can switch between normal and marked mode to basically control your player's aggression and who they're targeting. And so I found that in this particular situation, let's say, you have two players that are designed to mark Viluccia, but she swims into a situation where there's Besaid Aurox players that are in her vicinity that are not on her marking list. So in this case, let's say Waka and also Datto, they're not programmed to mark Viluccia. So what I do here is I switch back to normal mode because any mark mode players who have already given chase will just continue to give chase, even though they're no longer in mark mode because the chase has begun. But then when I switch back to normal mode, it, obviously it behaves as normal and those players around her that were previously ignoring her, they'll suddenly just switch on and they'll start to chase that player as well. So it's a way to, to manipulate your defenders into chasing and giving up certain players in certain situations. So I wanted to give that explanation now because there is a few times that I do it and I don't want to explain it every single time or have people confused about why I'm flip-flopping between them. But that's something I found works quite well and you can make it so that two of your players chase the opposing player swims into an area where non-marked players are lurking and then you can switch back to normal mode to activate those guys too and then potentially have three, four or even five players at once chasing down the same opposing team member. And so I found that to be particularly useful. So just keep an eye on that um, when you see it in the game. So you can see Waka tried to turn around but the, the kind of thing happened way too quickly here. So this wasn't the, the greatest example of it but I think you can understand the logic of what I'm trying to do here. So Viluccia dribbles through here, and it was kind of curious to see how this was going to work. I went straight back to mark mode to see if I could get them to chase her down. And Jesu's 63 speed here is kind of helpful. So Letty's already on the case as well, and those two are chasing her down. And thanks to Jesu's speed, we can stop her a little bit earlier than a normal player would have been able to do. This was a pretty good situation here, and Jesu didn't get to claim the ball, but because she makes a stupid decision and tries to pass, we're in a good position here. So Letty can't grab the ball, but it goes all the way over to Blapper, who is going to obviously fumble the ball, and Waka can come up with it. So this worked out really well. And at this stage, I've basically already won the first half. So this was just playing keep ball for literally 30 seconds of game time to make sure there wasn't enough time here for the All-Stars to score a goal. So as of this point, I was already safe, and I was rounding out the clock to finish the half. So you can see there, I mean, a lot of it was to do with like um, strange decisions, like bad decisions by the opposing team. But there were also a few little tweaks that I made and a few little good moves and calculated risks that I took in order to be able to survive and to score a goal. So that concluded the first half. But I mean, as you guys know, this team is so good that they can score pretty much at will. And so I had to survive another half without swimming behind the goal to try and nail this victory against the All-Stars. So this time for the second half, I decided I still wanted to try and take a risk by putting Botter in midfield. 
So I was kind of riding my luck here, but I just wanted to switch it up and see if I could stop Brother. Because I knew that if Brother won the Blitz off here, he was just going to swim straight towards the goal and try to score. So this was a very active attempt to try to block him from doing that. So let's see what happens here. Botter claims the ball, and this is not a problem because he only has three endurance normally, obviously, in midfield. It's, it's going to be very rough for him if anyone gets anywhere near him. But if he wins a blitz off, he's got enough time to sort of plan his moves and get away from people and make sure that he's not going to get himself in trouble. So now we can already start building a new attack here with, uh, with Datto, the battering ram of the Besaid Aurochs here. So of course he, he gets Blapper out of the way as we've grown accustomed to here. And then Brother comes in for a challenge, but again, impossible for Brother to do anything here. And so already it's looking like I should be able to break through here and potentially have a second shot on goal. If I could get two clear goals ahead, I was pretty sure I could get this done. So I switched to mark mode to get my players ready for like potentially losing the ball. And now it's a case of just waiting for Rop to commit here. You can see Rop's marking Waka very tightly. And so I wait for him to come. I don't get too far away so that I can make the pass because he's only got four passing here. And then I have to hope there's enough space for him to kind of turn around and face Nimrook, get close enough without Rop actually making it there. So this was absolutely almost perfect timing, but Caillou got in at the last second. So I needed to get closer here, it was a shame. I decided to try and just ride the tackle anyway, because I thought maybe there's a chance that Caillou kind of underperforms here. But unfortunately, Caillou does his job and takes the ball. So that was my opportunity to try and score the second goal, but didn't happen. So Caillou has the ball now, and we're not really interested in Caillou because obviously he can't score. He's no threat to us himself. I just need to stop Vilucha and Blapper from scoring. So now, as a result of mark mode, Vilucha is double marked here. These two, they add up to 15 tackle. This is really annoying because only Jasu registers here. I mean, I'm literally going to stop it here. Look at where Letty is here. I mean, the tip of his cone is at the midway point of Vilucha's cone. And for some reason, the game doesn't register Letty as being involved in this at all. So I felt like that was just kind of unfair. And so Jasu had to try and claim the ball by himself. He fails, and so Vilucha is now passing to Blapper. Now, as soon as this happened, I thought to myself, yeah, this is just the game being really annoying and just forcing their way towards a goal here because that whole Letty situation really annoyed me. And despite being in mark mode for some time, Blapper had kind of wriggled away from his defender. So for all the world at this point, it was looking like the All-Stars should have a free shot on goal and make it 1-1. So the ball goes over to Blapper, who should be scoring at this point because he only has Datto on defense. Now, he decides to dribble here. So once again, strange decisions, but I'm thinking at this point, yeah, the game's just trolling me. Blapper's going to dribble all the way up to the goal and then score, because there's still no one else other than Datto that can tackle him right now. Somehow, despite like mark mode and doing everything I can, Blapper has found himself some free space right in front of goal. So much like Brother did within the first like 30 seconds of the match, what should Blapper do here? Of course, he should shoot and he should score. But what does Blapper do here? He decides to pass. So I'm like, what the hell? Very, very weird decisions here. And this is something that's obviously out of my control. And I'm pretty certain there must be an RNG element here, as opposed to the AI literally being really dumb. It must be a certain percentage chance of a shot or a pass, given like where he is on the field. So I'm sure this is a low percentage outcome, because we didn't see that much of this happening over the live streams. I'm pretty certain in the same game, we never saw two situations where it was this obvious that they should shoot, but they decided to pass instead. This was pretty much the only attempt where that happened that I can remember. So he does make a pass. Let's see who he decides to pass to. It is, of course, Vilucha. Now, she can still score in this scenario. Like, the danger's not over yet by any means. So Vilucha gets in once again, and this time I have the two-man breakthrough that I want, because Jasu plus Letty, they have 15 tackling together. So I'm thinking if we tackle her, we should be able to take the ball. And if she decides to shoot, they have five blocking each, plus keepers five catching. So hopefully we'll be able to block the shot as well. So let's see how this plays out. She decides to shoot and take both of the tackles here. 
Thankfully, Jasu does a great job, and as a result, Letty can strip the ball. Now, once again, I'm going to stop it here because this is another one of those really dangerous situations where even after you've won the ball, you can actually put yourself into even more danger because the golf in stats is so large that Letty is very vulnerable to being caught and having the ball stripped away from him. So it was a decision to make here because brother was, was literally facing me, so he was definitely going to tackle me. And I just had to see if I could leave a one-on-one -on -one against Brother with Velucha out of the picture so that Letty has a chance to get through his tackle and to pass the ball. So let's see how this one played out. Thankfully, Velucha once again, she didn't directly turn around and immediately start to swim after Letty. And so that left Letty with a one-on-one -on -one against Brother. Now, in this situation, Brother's blocking is so high that passing, I think, would have been stupid. And so we had to take a risk and hope that Brother didn't kind of overperform too much with his RNG and strip the ball away from me. So this was a, another tense moment here. If I survived this tackle against Brother and managed to pass to Waka, I could potentially start to round this game off. But of course, Brother makes the tackle here. Just look at that face. He makes the tackle here uh, above his own stat. And he's, again, he's got a clear through path towards the goal now. And so I was just thinking that this is a long-winded way of the game trolling me into scoring another goal. It's been making these stupid decisions, doing this passing here and there, some weird RNG things happening. But now it's like, okay, we've, we've played around enough here. We'll make the RNG work in our favor and brother will go through and score. So I was pretty sure at this point that I was going to let in a goal. Now, thankfully, Botter being in midfield was actually clutch here because he was around when Brother was going to pull the trigger. Now, ordinarily, once again, what you would do in this particular situation is that Botter has the tackling ability to take the ball away from Brother. So you wouldn't be letting Botter make a tackle here. You have 14 shot. Botter only has five blocking and Keeper only has five catch. And you are very close to the goal. So ordinarily, Brother should still be shooting here. And the chances are, I would say like 70, 80, 90%, he's going to score a goal. But what does Brother do instead? He decides to pass. So they just continue to toy with me here, just passing it between themselves and refusing to shoot. But obviously, I'm still too weak to get the ball and to get myself out of trouble. So I'm having a really tough time trying to keep up with everything here. And Blapper, once again, gets himself into a no-break situation. Like, look at that minimap. I think as a result of messing around with mark mode and normal mode and that kind of thing, I think sometimes the game gets a little bit confused and it can't track things properly. Blapper gets a free shot here, which was really frustrating. I was really squirming around and doing everything I can to just stop these guys from scoring a goal. So then what does Blapper do? He passes again. It was just unbelievable. They just kept refusing to shoot and kept passing it around really, really weirdly. And so at this stage, I was just like, okay, man, like there's not really much I can do. I just have to wait and see how lucky we end up getting here. So Velucha again just swims around in a really silly way and decides to still pass here. It's just getting really confusing all of this passing. And not only that, she decides to pass to Brother who's all the way back over there. So the AI just really lost the plot here and started doing some really, really dumb things. It was a critical point in the match here. Three minutes in, Brother fumbles this ball in the middle. And in real time, I was immediately thinking, oh shit, who is going to claim this ball? Is there a chance that Waka could claim this instead of Rop? If he does, once again, we could grind the clock down in a, in a non-kind of glitchy way to win the game. But if Rop gets it, then we are still in danger and we could still be letting in a goal. So let's see what happens. Of course, Rop comes through with the ball. And one more time, we have to try and see if we can survive an attack from the All-Stars. So I get into mark mode to prepare myself. You can see the two players marking Blapper. And so ordinarily, they would just ignore Rop and keep swimming towards Blapper. You can see where their cones are pointed. They have no interest in Rop. And this was the point at which I switch back to normal mode so that my two defenders stop tracking Blapper and focus their attention on Rop because he'd basically kind of fallen into their trap. And there was a chance we could strip the ball away from Rop if the two defenders could turn and cause a break quickly enough. So that's what I tried, and it was just as I planned. Botta and Datto were both there, and now we're going to try to claim the ball. And Botta does a fantastic job of claiming the ball here, but once again, as always, um, we are in danger. He's only got three endurance, and no matter who tackles him here, he's going to lose the ball. So it was really agonizing because things were going really weirdly, but also really well at the same time. And I was thinking, like, there's a few little things that need to go my way for me to win here. Botter stripping the ball from Rop was really good and really clutch, but because of his low endurance, it, it also basically meant that he was stuck. There was no way that he could get rid of the ball because he's just going to get tackled by everybody 
and his passing is too low. He's going to be blocked by everyone. Botter kind of had almost no choice but to give up the ball. And so we find ourselves with this particular encounter. Now, what do you guys think is the best move here for Botter? If he tries to pass, Blapper has 11 blocking. And so the odds of that pass being either completely not blocked by Blapper or his RNG being low enough that it only registers as a 5 is very, very low. But then by the same token, Botter has 3 Endurance and Blapper has 5 Tackling. Now with 5 Tackling, with the way the RNG is known to work, he can do as low as 2 or as high as 7. So it means there is a small chance here that Blapper actually does a 2 instead of a 5 and Botter ends up surviving. But I mean, the odds here of anything working out is extremely small. The vast majority of outcomes here would be Blapper taking the ball and starting off a new attack. So let's see what happens here. I decide to break and I take my chances here and unbelievably Blapper pulls a 2 on the RNG which was extremely lucky for me and it meant I could get the ball out of Botter's hands and edge ever closer to victory. So I couldn't believe my luck here. This was like, this worked out super well. And to be fair, Waka had a little bit of a chance here to shoot once again at goals. So I was like, why the hell not? Let's try and see if we can get it done. Now, <laughs> I got myself into a bit of a pickle here because all of them immediately started to come onto Waka. And I was like, shit, this, this all kind of happened too fast. Maybe I shouldn't have gone this aggressive. And I kind of regretted my decision a little bit afterwards here. But if he swims any further, he's just going to get caught. If he shoots, you 100% can't score here against Nimruk because the shot would have gone down too far. If he swims, he's going to get swamped by multiple defenders. And if he tries to pass, he doesn't really have an option. Maybe the pass can reach Letty if you're lucky. That's one of the only options that seems available. But passing to Botter is obviously stupid. And I did consider trying to pass to one of my defenders, having them deliberately fumble it. But then I thought if that happens, there's a good chance that one of the attackers will claim the ball instead of another Besaid Oryx player. So this was a bit of a tough decision here. And making the wrong decision and having it not go my way could have very easily resulted in me letting in a goal in the last second. So let's see what happened here. What I decided to do was to deliberately dribble and give the ball away deliberately to a defensive player on the All-Stars because a lot of the other alternatives could have resulted in either Brother, Vilucha or Blapper getting the ball from us. So one general tactic that I obviously always tried to do was that if there was a very high chance or a guaranteed chance I would lose the ball, I always tried to make sure I lost it to either Caillou or to Rop so that we had less chance of having an attacker come away with the ball and trying to score on a counter-attack. So that's why I deliberately let these guys come. Once again, the same thing that happened to Rop a little bit earlier, Caillou swims in the vicinity of Vilucha and the two players that are marking her. And so it's almost like, once again, he falls into the trap and I try to release my defenders by going back into normal mode so that they end up giving chase to Caillou and potentially giving him a two-man breakthrough instead. So that's what I go for. And it works out perfectly once again. And this gets him in a lot of trouble. Jasu with the good tackle here. And at this stage, it looked like for all the world, I was going to be able to win this match. So trying to grind down the clock. And once again, because Velutra had given chase, I'd already gotten lucky once. And I thought, I'm not going to ride my luck again deliberately give the ball away to Caillou so that we don't have an attacker with the ball. So Caillou takes the ball and he's just going to continue to waste time here and it was looking almost certain now that I would be able to win against the All-Stars for the first time. 20 seconds I was already pretty sure it wouldn't be enough but even now I was like man something crazy could happen but you can see time is running out very very quickly and thankfully we managed to, to finish things off here. So was it like the epic glamorous match that I would have hoped for where like, I don't know, I went 1-0 down and then we did some amazing things to win 2-1 or we scored like a buzzer beater or something like that. That's how I would have wished it would have happened. But this was kind of what was necessary to win. It wasn't pretty. And there was a lot of like bemusing decisions from the AI and also some clutch RNG when we needed it as well. So I think it was fairly balanced. I would say the RNG side of it wasn't like absolutely godlike, I think, because we had moments where like, for example, brother stripped the ball from Letty when normally he shouldn't have. And so we did have things like that happening. So I wouldn't say it was like good RNG the whole way. I mean, we didn't even win the first blitz off. But when you look at it as a whole, of course, it was a good RNG attempt alongside a lot of baffling decisions from the quote unquote AI and also, I think, some decent decisions from me and some good little moves here and there to try and create space and take some calculated risks when it was necessary. So there you go, guys. That is the win that I want to bring you guys in the live stream. I couldn't make it happen, 
but there was a lot of people kind of invested and having a lot of fun kind of watching the attempts and cheering me on and so I definitely wanted to bring this victory to you guys so you could see the OG Aurochs defeat these absolute titans of Blitzball. So I'm very happy to be able to get this win and that kind of rounds off this little like mini adventure that I went on in Blitzball. I had a lot of fun with it. Thank you to everybody who supported it, everyone who watched the live streams and hung out with me and shared the adventures and the ups and downs of trying to beat this all-star Blitzball team. If I come up with any more Blitzball ideas in the future, I will definitely share them with you. I mean, as you guys have seen at this point, I do genuinely enjoy playing Blitzball. But for me, it's usually only fun when there is this sort of really challenging element to it. And the RNG gives it this sort of unpredictability where even if you're good at Blitzball, you still need to take very calculated risks and still hope for some RNG. So it keeps the attempts kind of fresh and interesting for me. So in the comments, if you do have any other Blitzball themed ideas that you'd like to see on the channel, do let me know and I can definitely use them for live streams and content in the future. But for now, that's all. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed seeing the lowly Besaid Aurochs defeat the All-Stars. See you soon. Take care.